how do I feel looking back on 25 years? I'm incredibly proud that we are still here as such a vibrant organization. We are a bunch of guys who literally learn the game by watching it on YouTube. And they get hit, and they're like, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> the sense of camaraderie and, and seeing that continue off the field. Whereas in the first few years, it was kind of like, this could fall apart tomorrow. All is in readiness here. The stars are out. The big stage is here. The red carpet is rolled out. Looking forward to this as we like to say, a hump digger. And the question is, can you teach old dogs old tricks? This is a rematch of last year's grand final between the two sides. They made the grand final last year. Now a rematch. It was a slugfest. Every single player on that team is a weapon. I'll tell you what, if that doesn't make the hair stand up on the back of your neck, you might want to check your pulse. So, hang on to a partner. This is going to get rough and ready. The two best uh, sides here at the Nationals get to rise into the top in Prince fashion. And these boys are going to get it on smash mouth in the middle. the fact that all these Americans love this sport. To bring you another game here in the uh, 2022 USAFL Nationals. And right now we've got the Philadelphia Hawks and the Oklahoma Buffaloes. And joining me this time, the treasurer from the USAFL, Heath Moore. Heath, how are you? I'm doing great. What a beautiful day. The, yeah. the cloud cover, got misty mountains <laughs> in the background. I can't imagine a better condition uh, to, uh, uh, to play a game of footy. Moore, M-O-O-R-E. Just like Roger. All right, so here we go. They're about to start here. Third match out here at Cooper's Field. All right, we are coming to you once again from the uh, Silver Lake Athletic Complex in Norco, California, and it's the uh, third match here at Cooper's Field today. It is on the uh, on one side, you get the Philadelphia Hawks in their gold and brown uniforms, and the other side, black and white with the red sash. That would be the uh, uh, the Oklahoma Buffaloes. So probably waiting for the clock to tick over before <laughs> they do yep. the. Uh ball up trying to keep things on time here understood it's aware that we would have to wait for the clock they're usually racing against the clock but no. here we go well while we're doing that Keith uh, tell us a little bit about yourself uh, I've been playing Aussie rules since 2000 so I was at the LA Nationals way way back then um, I played a whole bunch of games I've had a whole bunch of positions in different clubs too many to mention 
and uh, been treasurer for now two years going into three. Cool. And here we go. Uh, taking out of the ruck and they get the clearance there. That's the Hawks. Kicked into their forward 50 and they're starting in a hurry. Kick goes over everybody. Who's going to get there first? It's going to be taken there by one of the uh, Oklahoma Buffaloes there. That's Jack Odell. And he kicks out and it's going to take a weird hop and go right over the boundary line. It'll be out of bounds. We'll have a boundary throw in. Yeah, the kick was well intentioned, but took an unkind bounce, as happens too, way, way, way too often in this sport. Oh, well, the breeze and hasn't helped either. <laughs> that is right. The Rucks are going to play. Oh, oh, hang on. They're going to bring that one back. A little bit of an unfair advantage there. Nice try, though, the air by uh, John Hinchin there, I believe it is, for the uh, Philly Hawks. Going up again, hit out, and a bunch of players going for it. It looks like. Can the Hawks get it to sit for them? No, they cannot because it rolls out of bounds. We're going to have another boundary throw in. A few meters gained there for the Buffaloes. Uh, Actually, it was a free kick. They must have paid deliberate. Yeah, I think he paid it deliberate. And sits for one of the Hawks now. That's uh, number three there. That's uh, Ryan McGettigan. And uh, now Oklahoma getting a hold of it. And let's see here. Marked. Marked right at midfield. Nice job there, number 27. That's Dustin Hayes for the Buffaloes. So a quick hand pass off that mark. Wisely trying to get something built up here. Moving forward, Oklahoma. A little bit of a, kind of a toe poke off that handball. And that kick goes in towards the sticks. I think that's going to go across the face of goal. And that'll be a point. Yeah, well, a very, very quick snap. Hard to do, hard to do accurately. Went across the face, unfortunately, for a, for a minor score. So Buffalo gets the first point. And on the Watch AFL scoreboard right now, it's Buffalo. One behind one. And Philadelphia, nil, zero. Kick in from the back goal square by Philadelphia. Winds up in Oklahoma hands, and they're going to bring it through again. Harry, he is wrapped up. He's able to get the handball off, though. Trying to get to some space there. He handballs it off, and he's got somebody in space now. Let's sit for him. He can't pick it up. Can he get it? Not before it goes out of bounds. Yeah, it looks like the uh, your half forward flank player just couldn't get his hands cleanly on the footy and uh, unfortunately saw it over the boundary line. Sometimes that oblong Aussie rules football can be a... A pain in the neck to try and corral. Happens to me all the time. <laughs> but this isn't your only code of football. No. I uh, played in, uh, Gaelic football for about 10 years. I played hurling for about mm, close to 20. So you're basically walking international rules. Yeah, no one knows what I'm talking about when I'm talking <laughs> about what I'm talking about. And it goes back in, goes over all the, both rocks, and uh, goes back to ground. Still back to ground. Someone trying to get the crumbs and get it out of there. And finally just winds up in the air. No clear possession yet. And one of the Buffaloes just get dispossessed. And now Philadelphia has it. They're just going to try and kick it up the corner. And blocked by one of the Oklahoma players. He kicks it back in a forward 50. And intercept mark there by Philly. They'll bring it right back out into attack. Here we go. They're going to do a kick right here, uh, for, uh, right forward flank. But that is intercept mark there by Oklahoma. That's going to be number six. Number That's six. Steven Rasbold. And then marked by number 42, that's uh, Jason, ja, I'm sorry, Jacob Goodrick. Jacob Goodrick with it right now. He gets it to the boot. And leading his opponent oh, to the ball. Oh, he, he can't he mark it. it. Looked like he was going to mark it. He just couldn't uh, hang on to it as he was going to ground. Yeah, it looked like he was going to try to take a sliding mark, and the ground uh, didn't do him any favors there and uh, just uh, put him off just a touch. It's too bad because he did a nice job leading his opponent to the ball, too. He just couldn't come up with it. And he comes out of the rock and goes right back out again. So we'll have another boundary throw in. We've had a bunch of those so far. Yeah, it seems like uh, they love the boundary throw ins. Apparently, As I say, we, we should put this on HBO called Game of Throw Ins. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Comes out, and uh, let's see here. Big battle for it there, and that goes out of bounds once Big again. Big shocker, no And throw I think in. we're right here Game of Throw Ins. So if you don't understand the game and throw ins are really kind of putting you off, this is the game to watch. And of course, if they have a lot of free kicks, we can call it Pings of Honor. <laughs> and it comes out, and it's about to go back in once again as. Uh, I think that's Goodrich once again. Goodrich, I'm sorry, goes in. And loose ball down near the sticks. Nice job in defense by the, by the Hawks. We've got a, free, a whistle. And uh, let's see here. I think the call was initial, initially play on. Mm -hmm. um, and then just didn't thought better of it, maybe. Uh, it's going to be a free kick, actually. And that'll be, I believe, that's number 10. That's uh, George Pellersells. So giving Oklahoma a chance for their second scoring shot of this first half. Yeah, tough angle. The wind's not going to do him any favors. Unless he pushes it really left and, and tries to maybe bend it back. And that's going to no, that's gonna bend right back, and that'll be another single point. That'll yeah. be another minor. So now two behinds, two on the Watch AFL scoreboard for the Oklahoma Buffaloes and for the Philadelphia Hawks. Still nothing yet. Philadelphia taking the kick in once again out of their back goal square. 
and they're going to kick it off, and the wind's going to take it, and just over the outreach hands of John Hinchin. Ball to ground at the Buffalo's right half forward flank, and we've got another whistle, and I think they're just going to ball, are they going to ball it up. Yeah, it looks like. No, yeah. actually, no, it's a free kick. Free kick going to um, Alex Marekian. Yeah, it might have been something in the back there, a little bit of extra. He's got it back now, and he's going to kick it in toward the sticks, and intercept marked right in front of the goals. Nice job there on defense by Philly. Great to read. Actually, I, I see the finger going up, so it's a point. But great read of the play there, by the way. It looks like the fullback from so Philadelphia. So it's a point. So now in the Watch AFL scoreboard, it's uh, three behinds three for the Oklahoma Buffaloes. And still no scores yet for the Philadelphia Hawks. But keep in mind, we're talking three scores but three minors. If Philly gets down the field and kicks one straight, they, they hit the front. And they're trying to do that right now as they kick it up, looking for He's got a target. He's got him. And here we go. The Hawks are away. He takes a running bounce. Kicks it ahead, looking for a teammate. Just goes over his outstretched hands. I think that, is that Loring? I think so. Kicks it ahead, and let's see. We've got a target there, and winds up in Hawk hands. He's able to handball it out, and it goes to ground. And Oklahoma takes it away. Although that one gets kicked, and let's see. That's going to, oh, just fall just inside and then bounce out, so it'll be a boundary throw in. Not a kick out on the fall. Sorry, I missed that passage of play. I had a friend of mine that I hadn't seen, I haven't seen in about six, seven years. Let's just uh, tap me on the leg and say hello. Yeah, that's a sound, it sounds like you had a heckler there. Yeah, well, he probably will be a heckler later on. But uh, <laughs> that's the great thing about this tournament is I, I run into friends and I only see every handful of years and it's great to rekindle those friendships. That's great. We've got a whistle coming off and they're going to do the throw once again. Uh, looks like the, hand <laughs> the throw in has been handed off to a more competent throw It's been in delegated. It. And hit out, and the clearance going to the uh, Hawks. They're going to kick it up ahead. It's not going to get out of bounds, and the Buffaloes will get it now and kick it, and almost intercept mark there. And trying to get it there, there once again, one of the Hawks kicks it in the middle, and that is marked. That's number 17 there for the Philadelphia Hawks. That is uh, Jimmy Di uh, Jeremy Diaz, who comes from Tampa. Kick goes in, and not marked, but taken, and moved into attack immediately by uh, Oklahoma. They've got a player there in space. Oh, nice oh, foil punch. coming in at the last minute there by the Hawks. Great defensive punch there to keep it, uh, you know, keep that mark from getting taken. And they've got a player that gets, they've got a player who gets pinged for ball. And that free kick is going to John Loring. He already kicks it out and spoiled there. And Oklahoma's still trying to move it forward. Giving chase. And another stop in the action. Looks like. Uh, I didn't see the umpire, but uh, looks like the uh, free kick awarded to the Philly Hawks. And here we go once again. He gets rid of it just before he gets chased down. Goes off a foot and then knocked ahead. And we got a whistle and free kick going to the Buffaloes. Yeah, a bit of contact uh, as, as your man's head was over the ball. Yeah. Umpires don't like that. I don't like it either. Yeah. Especially on the receiving end. Yeah. Buffalo with a free kick in their back 50. I'm sorry, to the Buffaloes. Defensive 50. Defensive 50, yes. I knew what you meant. <laughs> I was more worried that I said it was Buffalo instead it was Oklahoma Buffaloes. But, uh. So kick in danger there. Me your man's hands were just about on the footy and the foot came in. Can't do that either. No. And so this time the free kick will be going to the Philadelphia Hawks on the far wing. So kick intercepted, intercepted Mark uh, there by the Oklahoma player. He's looking for somebody to send it to. That's the targets lined up. Not, not, not a deep kick, but a high kick, but it's intercept Mark there by the Hawks. They're going to push it up the far wing here. Oh, he's going to sell some candy and get right around the man on the mark. Line drive kick forward and goes over everybody. And gets kicked up. Who's going to get there first? Looks like the uh, Buffaloes will get it again. He is hauled down, and he is gone. That's ball. Well, that was a massive tackle done at the right time to hopefully Philadelphia get something penetrating into their forward, in their 450. And he handballs off to a player on the run. They've got someone right in front. He's marked it, and he's just going to stop right there. That was a great play. He had the free kick, but there was someone streaking right, right next to him. Handballed it off, and he got a good kick. They had somebody open right in front. And it kept, the, uh, kept Oklahoma unawares, didn't it? Yep. And that kick goes through. 
And that's a goal. So what have. do we talk about? You know, they just takes one scoring shot and they hit the front. And that's what exactly happened here as they do kick their first goal of the match. In fact, the first goal of any team of the match. And right now on the Watch AFL scoreboard, the score stands. The Philadelphia Hawks, one straight six. And the Oklahoma Buffaloes, three behinds three. So that's our first major of the day. And once again, it all started off that play. It was a great play. Instead of trying to take the free kick, you had someone coming up, just handball it to him, gets it into 50, and you had some space because they weren't set up in defense yet. Right. So you had someone behind everybody. And taking advantage, being accurate in your kicks, taking advantage of when you are in the offensive 50, it really makes a big difference, clearly. Like we just saw there. And now, coming out with the clearance there, it's the Buffaloes once again. And it's going to skip right toward the sticks, and it's touched. They were able to get to it right before it went through the big sticks. Yeah, a bit of desperation there by the two Philly players to get a hand on that and push it through for a minor score. But the desperation paid off as they did exactly that, and all of a sudden, instead of it being a 9-6 to six game, it's 6-4 to four as we check once again the Watch AFL scoreboard. One straight six for Philly, four behind four for Oklahoma. And Philly takes the kick in, going way up on the wing. Almost intercepted there by uh, Oklahoma once again. Oh, that was oh, a vicious tackle. Looks like was. he caught a bit of the head there. Yep, he did, and that's going to be a, a Buffalo's free kick. He goes over. They've got someone open, oh. and did he mark it? I think he did mark yeah, it. He, he had did. a bit of friendly fire there coming in. <laughs> but he did was able to take it down. Now he just has to try and find a target inside 50. And that goes in. That's going in quite a ways. Oh, almost made it to the sticks. Yes, it did. That was a big penetrating kick. I think it got an assist from the wind. Um, took advantage of that from, geez, uh, 50, 55 meters out. Yeah, shades of Malcolm Blight there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now it, it's uh, five behinds five for Oklahoma on the Watch AFL scoreboard. And still Philly with the one single scoring shot, but it was a major. So they still lead 6-5. And that kick, nice job smothering it, knocking it down. But it looks like the Buffalo still might have a shot at it here as it goes along the ground. He is wrapped up, is able to handball it off, and gets it to a teammate. And let's see, that kick, oh, that could be dangerous. It, nope, it's going to be tapped and going through again. Oh, it looks like the Philly backman was able to read that, uh, that oh, tap okay. there right in the goal mouth and was able to get it out, but it okay. looks like it's coming straight back. Coming straight back, and the kick goes in again. That looks like that's going to go wide as well. And let's see here. So there we go. So kicking accuracy really, uh, you know, is it, Oklahoma's dominating this game, but not able to, to capitalize on that by Although getting they, the major scores. they've leveled the score. They have. The scores are level now, and uh, Philly, one straight six. And Oklahoma, basically a major's worth of minors yeah. at six behind six. That's on the Watch AFL scoreboard. And the kick in taken once again by the Hawks. Moving into position, bit of a spoil there, but the Hawks do get it now. He's not able to get off a clean kick. Another Hawk gets it, he gets wrapped up, and then toe poked ahead, and here comes Buffalo once again with the three, trying to pick it up there. It's a Rasbold once again, and we've got a whistle, and it's just going to be tied up. Umpire calls my ball, and it'll be balled up just outside the Oklahoma forward 50. And looked like for a moment there the Hawks were going to get the clearance, but... Uh, couple of hands get in the way. The Hawks do get it now, and the kick goes out, and it's coming towards this boundary here. Will it make it there? It certainly will. Well, tremendous pressure from Oklahoma through this entire game. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hawks just really aren't able to, to capitalize on any possessions that they have, or any more than moment. Just just the one, the, the one that they, they, they did capitalize on, that was textbook. That was beautiful. Up it goes, and we got a whistle. Uh, and we're going to do it again. So they need to nominate two men to go up. There was an extra man in that mix, so oh, yeah. they're going to redo. Can't do third man in anymore. And hit out, and the clearance going to the Buffaloes. And intercept mark there. That was beautiful by Philly. Great read of the flight of the ball there yeah. to pull that down. And nice job, too, with the, with the body work, making sure that you got uh, in position to get that ball. As, oh, that is a nice smother, and it's going to go right out of bounds. He's keeping it in, uh, Oklahoma 4 or 50 for sure, but he just put his body on the line, and uh, the kicker, uh, Philly kicker, just decided to kick it a little bit too close to the man on the mark and paid the price there. The funny thing is, with, with Oklahoma's game today, we're seeing a lot of ones, both you know one point and also one percenters. They're doing a whole bunch in there. That's true, that's true. Again, uh, here's another one. <laughs> in the flight mark. of the ball and then another intercept mark for Oklahoma. Andrew Rasbold once again. And a quick hand pass off. 
And a penetrating kick into in, inside 50. Right to a hawk, he marks it. Nice job staying with that one as he had to go to a knee to get it. But now he kicks it out to the wing. And they've got it. So when the Hawks get a bit of space, looks like they're good at organizing. Yeah. And let's see, it's going to take a hop. And oh, it goes right over the uh, head of the uh, Oklahoma player. Bunch of players going to ground right now trying to get it. And those crumbs will be unavailable. Those crumbs get locked up in the cookie jar, and the umpire's going to toss it up. Big, huge tap by the Ruckman there for Oklahoma. And nice job because originally it went in the hands of a Philadelphia player, but they were able to get that back too in South Philadelphia from getting that clearance. Coming up now and uh, going through, goes off of a couple of Oklahoma players. Nice job by Philadelphia moving it forward once again. And that kick going into their forward 50. There'll be a race for it, and it looks like that's going to be right in front of the sticks where it'll be taken by one of the Buffaloes who kicks it into some yawning open space, and they've got it right now, and he's on the run. Just kicks a grubber ahead, but he's got a uh, play right there. I believe that's uh, Alex Marakian. He's got it now. Great space there by Oklahoma. Yeah. And he's got to play on. Long kick. Can he get there in time? Take, oh, it's going to take that bounce and just pop right out, but still, once again, just in the standpoint of meters gained, that's a big victory there for uh, the Oklahoma Buffaloes. Absolutely great use of space coming out of full back there by Oklahoma. Now just come to the fat side of the ground and just blow it right down there. Coming out once again, hit out by the Hawks and hit out by everyone. And then there was a bit of a push there too, but they're going to just throw it back in. Latter stages of this first half here, once again, checking the Watch AFL scoreboard. It's Philadelphia one straight six and Oklahoma six behind six. Oh, that uh, handball intercepted. That's a heartbreaker. Hand pass over the, the top would have been brilliant if he couldn't connected it. He's got it though, and then he's dispossessed just as he had it. Looked like it was going to be a kick from uh, Brent Harrington, but uh, just as he picked up the ball off the ground, he did get dispossessed. And then they've got a, a player there, a Philadelphia player, just gets tackled. But apparently the tackle was a, there was a little too much zeal in that tackle. Yeah, he came in really hard. Unfortunately, he came across the shoulder and it popped up around the neck. Yeah, and unfortunately that Philadelphia player is not getting up. Oh, he's up now. Okay. But at any rate, the uh, Hawks will get the free kick. Oh, it looks like a twisted ankle as well, so. Oh, boy. Yeah. I've had a few of those in my day. <laughs> More than a few. Mm -hmm. And they hurt. <laughs> hey, at this age, I do that just going up to get a beer. <laughs> So the umpire has the ball. He's just waiting for that injured player to go off, looks yeah. like. Mm -hmm. And the free kick going to John Loring for the Hawks. That's marked. Now they're just going to move it up the far wing. Up it goes. There's a contest forming, and a bunch of players going after it. It looks like Oklahoma will have it. They do kick it back. And goes over everybody, but it looks like the Hawks will get a backhand ball there to Loring. Loring's going to get some open space, goes and kicks. Nice job there, he marks it, and he's got some space to run. He's going up the corridor, and he's just going to try and deliver it. Uh, although it looked like, oh, it looked like Oklahoma had numbers, but the ball went over everyone's head. But Oklahoma does pick it up right now, and they do kick it back the other way, right up the corridor. Big contest there, nice spoil, and then he is brought down, and we've got a whistle, and ping for a throw. Doesn't, maybe he doesn't agree, but uh, it's going to be a free kick for Philadelphia. And that free kick going to number four. Oh, we have two number fours. So either Darren Green or Alvin Dunbabin. Final so was going in here. The kick cut off there right in the middle of the ground, going back to another Oklahoma player. Thanks, thanks Heath. He's got my back. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> and that kick going up now. Settling into space. Is it going to be? Loring, Loring gets it. I don't know if he took the mark, but he was able to maintain possession. Gets a handball out, and then just a kick along the ground. It'll sit for him. Handballed right. off to Loring once again. Loring off the side of his foot, but still gets it to a teammate. Handballed back, and here come the Hawks with it once again. And a little bit of a line drive. He's, he's able to jump up and get it there. Is he able to dispose of it? Yes, he is. Ball going back to ground. It's loose. Looks like the Hawks will pick it up. And... He's able to get out of the uh, 
Grasp there, and they handball it ahead. Here we go. Another handball. Handball back. Phillies on the move. Going into their forward 50. Here's the kick. Looking for, and oh, not quite getting. Actually, oh, got, yeah. no, it looks like we had a whistle there. I don't know if that was behind the play. Looks like a free kick going to the Hawks. So it's good to see that their opportunity did not go for not. They still, they still have a chance to boom it in their inside 50. So it's going to be about a 50 meter attempt here. That's a big kick. Will it make it all the way? Does it get the carry? It does. Let's see here. That's uh, behind. So Philadelphia takes the lead once again. On the Watch AFL scoreboard, it's Philadelphia 1-1-7. One, one, one goal, one behind, seven points. And uh, six behinds, six for the Oklahoma Buffaloes. And the Buffaloes taking the kick in once again from their back goal square. And no I horn. That's, uh, that's halftime, I believe. Yep, no Don't horn. Don't hear a horn, but uh, everyone's walking off to the... Uh, there we go. That's the horn. So there we go. So uh, that is the halftime kind of siren whistle horn thingy. And that's going to do it for one half of football here from the Silver Lake Athletic Complex here in Norco, California. The score standing at halftime right now. The Philadelphia Hawks, one goal, one behind, seven points on the Watch AFL scoreboard. And the Oklahoma Buffaloes, six behind, six points. Coming up next, we will bring you second half action. But while we're here at halftime, Heath, uh, tell us something about some of your uh, Gaelic football experiences. Oh, uh, you know, I started playing hurling. Um, there were a few Irish players on the footy club that I played with, and they were like, well, you got to do this. And they're like, okay, well, if you like hurling, you should probably play, play Gaelic football. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't played yet, but we did an international rules match in Atlanta that year, and I think this was like 2001. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, well, you know, I, lo you know, I love Aussie rules. Let's try this one. And, um, it's a t it, you know, it, the, the games are always talked about as how similar they are, but they're, they're drastically different in terms of mentality. In my mind, Aussie rules is a game about – Possessing the ball, but also disposing the ball, and if there's more possession in Gaelic football. And the skills, picking the ball up off the ground with your foot, is it takes forever to learn, you know, <laughs> and it makes it really, really hard. And there's so much running that you do in that game um, that compared to this, it's it it is uh, you know just as intense, but man, is it, it's great. But Aussie rules is my first love. That's good. You know? that, that was always one one sporting name that that kind of you know that piqued my curiosity. It's like hurling. You know, it's, a, it's like you ever play hurling? Yeah, after my bachelor party. After a bachelor, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. No, I love that game. I played. I played. I was a better hurler than I was at Gaelic football. Strangely. Oh. Okay. But um. But yeah. No. Always. Always rotate back to Aussie rules at every opportunity. That's good. So yeah. So. So the, how did you first catch the bug? The Aussie rules bug. What was the first thing that led you into it? So my cousin played for the Louisville club back okay. in the back in the late '90s, and I was visiting him, and he said, "Oh, there's a there's a league in the country," and I'm like, "No, there, no, that can't be right." And I was living in Atlanta at the time. The very next weekend, I'm under a tree reading a book, and I happen to look up and see two guys kicking a football. <laughs> nice. Across, I just hopped on my bike, rolled down, and a great friend of mine was the first guy I ever met. He said, "Well, we're playing next weekend." Why don't you come around? Great. I got knocked out cold in the first opening minutes of the very oh, first geez. game I ever played, and I've been madly in love ever since. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. And obviously, I was going to ask you who you barrack for in the AFL, but judging by your hat, I think I know. I think it's, uh, yeah, Adelaide Crows all the way. Everybody listening. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a friend that I met. His name is Jason Lehman, and unfortunately, he passed away a couple years oh, ago. Sorry to hear that. Um, but he worked for the Adelaide Crows, and he's uh, a lot of his family are involved in the Crows. Okay. And uh, I was I had the opportunity to go down and visit him and meet you know meet a lot of players that played at that time some friends oh, of cool. his and um, you know, I could list you know I could I, it sounds like I'm name dropping Mark Rashido um, <laughs> you know and hang out with those that's fellas. a name that'll stand yeah. R -R. and uh, it, some other players that everybody here would have recognized but yeah it was a lot of, and it really reinforced my love of the game just going down there and hanging out that's that's you know top of my footy bucket list is trip to Geelong. Fifty years long. Okay, yep. uh, you should probably go to Adelaide instead. But you know, we can get into that later. Yeah, no. <laughs> no trip to Geelong, see my beloved cats. All right, there you go. So once again, we're waiting for the second half to start here. We are live, by the way, thanks to the folks at uh, Go Live Sports. We are bringing this to you today. It's the uh, USAFL Nationals for 2022, the 25th Nationals tournament. By the way, can't forget to mention that it is Absolutely. the silver season for the USAFL. And uh, they've been around uh, for 50, 25 years, and actually, uh, the show we've been doing, Stateside Footy, has been around for 12 now. So, nice. really, really happy to you know, have as much time in with the USAFL, and uh, it's a great bunch of folks, and it's a, it's a fantastic game. I love the game. Yeah, it's great to see the league mature, and the participation now recovering from the, the unfortunate COVID years, and the numbers are back up, and the enthusiasm is there, and 
you know, the standard of the game and the culture behind the game and the culture behind clubs is just as important as watching the sport itself, you know. Well, we actually, speaking of COVID, because th th you know, we originally, we hung up the show, we stopped, we stopped basically in 2019. Then COVID happened, and then the Boston Demons reached out to me. It's like, you want to come out of retirement? We were starting up again, and I'm like, well, you know, maybe some lost moments, so good to get back into it. So, so yeah, basically I became the who. Yeah. <laughs> so. Wait, you're getting, getting paid like the who? <laughs> oh, God, I only wish. <laughs> but at least I know I won't be fooled again. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's where you, you know, um, well, the who, they don't get paid a paltry amount. They get paid adultery amount. So. Oh, that's uh, I see what you did there. That's oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. All right, enough music jokes for a while. My poor wife's probably down beside the stand going, oh, my God, will he shut up, please? Stop, please. Please stop. <laughs> I told you specifically, no yeah. who references. Yeah. All right, so second half about to start. And once again, as we take another look at that uh, Watch AFL scoreboard right now, Philly leads it 1-1-7 to uh, Oklahoma's uh, six behind six. So it'll be interesting to see what adjustments Philly make because they, they really used the footy well coming out of the back line, but just need to capitalize on all that effort. Yes. Um, and Oklahoma seemed to be dominating a lot more around the ball. Um, hopefully they can get their kicking straight and uh, we'll have a, you know, have more major scores here. There's the horn and the whistle and the ball. The ball goes up and it's going down. Here we go, footy once again, second half about, you know, starting now and, uh, and just as soon as it starts, it stops again because we've got a whistle and I think they're going to do it again. No, it looks like we had too many men in the center square there. Oh, okay. So it's a free kick, actually, then. There we go. Big kick there. You see the wind catch it. It just kind of does one of those uh, almost like wiffle ball moves. And here come the Hawks with it as they take it in defense and then move it back into attack as they kick it on the, uh, on the far wing, and he's able to mark it. And the kick goes up further. Looks like it's going to go in between everybody. It's picked up there by Oklahoma. They handball it back, and they're looking to bring it back into their attacking half now, and they do just that. Oh, it takes a bit of a bounce, though, goes right over the player's head, and almost taken away by Philly. That was a number four in there for Philly there. That was uh, Oliver Dunbab, and I believe, or Darren Green once again, because there were two number fours on the roster here. So, But there's not a 44, thank goodness. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> as it comes through, it goes past a couple of players, and uh, Oklahoma, that is nicely smothered there, and... Uh, Hawks trying to knock it on ahead there. Another player gets shepherded off the ball, and the ball's still at midfield. Philly player with a bit of time, going to use space with his hand, Paul, yeah. with a hand pass. And looks like, oh, going to be cut off by an Oklahoma player. The tackle just slides off to an Oklahoma player, puts, puts the boot to ball, goes straight up in the air, marked by <laughs> Oklahoma player, can't see the number. Looks like he's looking for a target downfield on the wing. Finds one. Good use of the body there, but unfortunately he took an unkind bounce to footy off uh, to the boundary line for a throw in. All right. So throw in almost right in front of our commentary position here. Second half action is underway. And it goes back up. Rucks are in place. And knocked out. Nice hit out there by a couple of the Hawks. And before Oklahoma can grab it, Rolls out of bounds. So a couple of meters gain there if you're the Hawks. A few meters. Boundary umpire ready to toss it back into play here. And hit out. Oh, they almost got the clearance. Is trying to uh, move out with it there was number 17, Jeremy Diaz. He's got it again now. He handballs it off. We've got a whistle, and let's see here. That's holding the ball. He's pinged. Just hung on to the ball too long. He had, he's well-intentioned with that just to take his time, but... A tackle gets rewarded. And now we've and got a 50-meter kick. I wonder, if, did he walk over the mark, I wonder? I think he, uh, he may have had, had some choice words for the umpire well, and walked over too. the mark. <laughs> so it'll be a 50, and that uh, kick will go to uh, Chris Morton for the Oklahoma Football Club. Hand balls it off. And nice little uh, behind-the-back pass there. And it goes back, and with it once again there is Morton. And he kicks it up, delivers it inside 50, and it is marked. Great kick into space there. He had almost no space to kick it into, but still found his target. Dustin Hayes, number 27, with his hands on the ball there. A little bit of a line drive kick there. And 
Another mark paid. So they get it in even closer now. Good vision to maintain his composure on that ball because it came in as a mongrel. That's very good. So here we go. Buffalo is still looking for their first major score. And they're discussing it right now. And they're still looking for their first and major score. score. So the scores are level once again. Checking the Watch AFL scoreboard. It's Philadelphia, one goal, one behind seven points. And seven behind seven for the Oklahoma Buffaloes. Nice mark there, and he's going to play it on there. That's number 36. That's uh, John Hinchin. Hinchin tries to handball it over. Gets the ball back up himself. Makes some space for himself. And then loses the ball, and he gets pinged. Tried to get the hand pass off in desperation, but a little bit too late as he was getting tackled. Christopher Cowwood re rewarded for the tackle there, and he kicks it right in uh, toward forward 50, but it's intercept mark there by one of the Hawks. It'll be coming right back. And might be coming right back again. No, actually, he goes behind him, and the Hawks will, uh, won't quite sit for them on the ground. It's not sitting for anybody. And another stoppage in play, and it looks like uh, setting up for the free kick there is one of the uh, Hawks. Kicks it out and a little too high. Oh, nice, oh, nice grab. grab there. That was beautiful by uh, Jacob Goodrick. But then uh, the ball goes to ground. Soccer to head there. But he can't hang on to it, but he still gets it to a teammate who handballs it to an another teammate. Oh. And then he is dispossessed by yeah. one of the Hawks, and he's pinged. He tried to take the man on and was dispossessed, and that's going to be a free kick every time. Absolutely. I mean, it's good to back yourself, but at the same time, know your limitations too. Uh, let's see here as it goes out, and it looks like that's going to be another boundary throw in. Second half action here you're watching from the Silver Lakes Athletic Complex right here in Norco, California. USAFL, uh, USAFL Nationals 2022. And right now we've got the deadlock match between the Oklahoma Buffaloes and the Philadelphia Hawks right now. They're both knotted at seven points as we take another look at that Watch AFL scoreboard. It goes out of bounds once again. And up it goes. Tapped out. And we've got another whistle. I think I've got a call there for kicking in danger. So it'll be a free kick for the Hawks. Yeah, I think frustrating setting in where the ball doesn't pop up and, and fellows tend to soccer it off the ground in that case. Yeah. Out to the side there. Nice spoil, but still picking it up there is number 35. That's uh, Chris Guff. And we've got, uh, although he gets uh, held up, and I think he just got called for ball. Yes, he did. So it's going to be um, Kyle, Kai Stoneham. Goes over everybody, goes to ground. Nice knock on ahead for the uh, Buffaloes. And here we go now. He's trying to stop, gets, get himself some space. He gets a snap around the body. Where's it going to go? And we've got a mark. I believe it was intercepted. Yeah. Intercept mark. Beautiful job there by the Philadelphia defense. That back line standing up. Oh, and then he sells some candy and is able to get a nice kick in. Settling under it now. Great punch there by the Philly backman. Yeah, nice. Uh, the Kai Stoner tried to get that mark, but he was spoiled. But now it looks like... Uh, Goodrick is going to kick it back. No, actually, not quite. Uh, and we've got a whistle, and it looks like they're just going to ball it up. Umpire calls, my ball. Get over here. We'll toss this thing up again. Up it goes. Hit out. Hawks can't quite get the clearance. Trying to move with it again. Ball goes to ground. Someone trying to get the crumbs. It's going to be a Buffaloes once again, although the Hawks pick it up now. And he is taken down from behind. That is ball. He's gone. A little unkind there. I didn't think he had possession of the ball, actually, when he got tackled. But no I'm not the one wearing the green shirt, so <laughs> here we go. All right. That's all I'm going to say about that. All right. <laughs> Dustin Hayes with it now. Delivery back into the forward 50. Who's going to get there first? Actually, it's not going to be marked. He's got it, though. He can't, able, oh, he can't quite get it to the boot. And Philadelphia wants to get taking it. And we got a whistle. And it looks like... I think I see a push in the back, so it'll be a free kick. And they tried to kick it back to the umpire, but it kind of just went skated right past him. So Loring setting up as the man on the mark, so obviously the free kick going to Oklahoma. Or is it going to be a ball up? I thought I saw an indication for a free kick, but I might, might be mistaken because the umpire's hanging on to it. Nope, it's going to be a free kick, all right. 
And with it there, once again, that's number 23. That's Brent Harrington for the Oklahoma Football Club. Well, that's a beautiful shot there, uh, kicking straight into the mountains with the cloud cover. All yeah, that. that's, that's uh, a beautiful. And, oh, did he spray it again? He did. Oh, my goodness. It's another behind. So the good news is the Buffaloes take the lead. The bad news is it's a point. Yeah, they've yeah. got the Buffalo seem to have uh, clearly all the chances and need mm -hmm. to capitalize on them to really. And then if you know if they were if the kicking was accurate, they'd be dominating this game. As we make another consultation with the AFL of uh, the Watch AFL scoreboard, it now stands the Oklahoma Buffaloes. One goal. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, eight behinds eight. That's what they have now. And Philadelphia is at one goal, one seven points. So as the action is back in the Philadelphia end. Just outside the 50, actually, as they're uh, going around with it. And have a player on the ground and a free kick going to Philadelphia. Umpire telling the Philly backman to stay on the mark, and he's going to play on. One bounce, trying to... Keep it through right there. He might have him. Oh, it just goes over his head. And... Oklahoma gets it, sidesteps a couple of tackles. Nice job there. Gets to somebody out in space, and Loring has it now. Loring handballs it out. Does a nice job shepherding his man off the ball. Oh, a little bit of a, almost like a rugby tap there. And here come the Hawks now. He handballs it off. Who's going to get there first? Oh, he just knocks it on. No numbers there, though, and it looks like uh, Buffaloes might get the ball there. However, they cannot move with it. Yeah, nothing getting organized. There's too much pressure coming from both sides to really get uh, get clean possession of the footy there. So we're just going to do ball up. Uh, it's one of those moments that I say is part Australian rules football, part twister. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's see here. We got a free kick going to the Hawks. You see immediately play, a player is running down the field trying to get in position here. Marked, nice job oh, there. He had mark. somebody right on him. Yeah, great Beautiful mark under mark pressure there. there. That's uh, Alex Fedorov, or yeah, Feder Federov, I believe. Another great part, mark under pressure there, just gaining a couple of yards. And that's going to be Elliot Carr. Carr kicking it to midfield, right there. Nice job methodically moving up the field, although that one a little ski jump, but he's still got it. Got it right to his man, so it's yeah. a free kick. Question is, does he have the journey from, it looks to be about 45. Unfortunately, I can't see the number here from here. Again, the wind not going to do him any favors at that distance. That's a big kick. It looks like it has a carry. Does it have the aim? It that does. looks pretty good. Oh, that's a beautiful kick. That is a goal. So once again, we've got the situation where Philly's got three scoring shots, two of them are goals, and right now they hit the front once again. As we look back to the Watch AFL scoreboard, it is now 2-1-13 for the Philly Hawks and eight behinds eight for the Oklahoma Buffaloes. And I was telling you, uh, with uh, Jimmy House, I was talking last, last thing, and we were talking about the fact that uh, when we do our show stateside footy, we have, one of the sayings we have is, first rule of footy, kick too many behinds, get your behind kicked. <laughs> and this might be a classic example of that because Oklahoma has way, way more scoring shots than the, the Hawks, but the Hawks right now still have the lead. They're yeah. up by, uh, by five, five points right now. Absolutely. Uh, if this wasn't the end of the season, then these boys would be uh, looking forward to some circle work uh, at the next training session, <laughs> run their legs off for not kicking yeah. straight. But yeah. here we go. They still have a chance. Who's going to get there? Nobody. Oklahoma picks it up. That kick gets caught in the wind, and it starts rolling, and that's going to be out of bounds. That was wise by the Oklahoma backman, just to put it into space, get it out safely, boundary lines your friend oh, every day in the backs. Two of your best friends in life, the boundary, boundary line and the undo button. <laughs> and, oh, we got a player knocked down there. And uh, That was a pretty hard hit, but it was fair. Hit, yep. So it's going to be another boundary throw in now. Getting into the latter stages of this game, this match here, and we're going to tap in. Let's see what do we got here. I think they're going to they're going to do it again. Yeah, the throwing guy was really high and got uh, caught up in the wind. Yeah. Up 
goes again, tapped out, and then tapped back. And handballed out by Oklahoma. Can they get someone to it? A nice job by Philly getting right there and getting, getting it to sit for them. And then shepherding the other players off the ball. Philly's able to move it ahead. And he's got it. Oh, he's taken. It looked like he was taken high. And I think they're going to pay him the free kick. Indeed, they are. Yeah, they are. The tackle came in pretty intense and then collected his head. Can't do that. And makes a move. Kicks it in. I don't know if he'll have the journey. It'll be close, though. And it's going to run through. And let's see here. Looks like a minor score. That might have been touched coming through. Okay, yeah, minor score, but that's still another point for the Philadelphia Hawks. They now lead on the Watch AFL scoreboard. Two goals, two behinds, 14 points. And the Oklahoma Buffalo is still at eight behinds, eight, as they take the kick in and then mark it. And we've got a whistle, and where's that going to go? <laughs> I remember one time we were at Nationals. I think it was uh, 20, 2012 or 2014. And... Um, where we were the commentary position, we had a camera up, and the ball went out of bounds, and I went to handball it back to the umpire, and I'm like, oh, I don't want this to dribble, so I put a little extra mustard, and then I watched it sailed over his head, I'm like, oh! <laughs> I felt like such a... That's the hardest nope. shot in footy, is to give it back to the umpire, isn't it? <laughs> I think so. All right, so in the midst of that uh, anecdote, Philadelphia has gotten a free kick, and they're outside their forward 50 once again. And that's a big boot. That's coming in tight. I wonder who, actually, might be all the that's way. That's through, I think. That's a goal, I that think. That is a massive. That's, that's a beautiful kick. That is a beautiful kick. Long range, right on target. And I'm going to invoke my hero, Dennis Kometi, centimeter perfect. <laughs> my hero. That was, that, was a, that was a beautiful kick, though. With the wind swirling around and being outside 50, that's not an easy task to do. And Philadelphia seemed to be making making the most of their chances. So we have another update to the Watch AFL scoreboard now. Philadelphia, three goals, two behinds, 20 points. And the uh, Colorado, I'm sorry, the Oklahoma Buffaloes still stuck at eight behinds, eight. And time is running down quickly. And basically the uh, Buffaloes looking to crash everything and move it up the ground. However, they were a little too rough with their movement and as a result, Philadelphia gets the free kick. They're going to bring it back the other way. And now all they have to do, really, is just run off some time. Almost intercept mark there by Oklahoma. Ball goes to ground. Handballed out. He's got it. Whistle. And uh, we've got holding the man. And that will be a free kick going to the Philadelphia Hawks. And penalties like that are going to do the Hawks a bunch of favors because all it's going to do is take seconds off the clock, which Oklahoma definitely, definitely does not need. Mm -hmm. So those are marking the inside 50, easily taken to the Hawk player who uh, was fairly alone. That is number two, that's Tristan Webster. Oh. Oh, oh. Try to put everything into that kick. I don't know. And just, uh, caught, just, it, just caught a check side and it just sprayed off to the right. Yeah. Been there too. <laughs> Coming in and that kick that kick is marked. As that was a kick, obviously that was out on the full. So the free kick was taken in. And now Oklahoma looking to move it up the ground. And it's going to be picked up by Philadelphia instead. He's able to stay just in bounds. Him, nope, no, I guess not. Well, oh, did so, go out. Yeah, so it looks like Philadelphia player, I mean, he was completely surrounded. He had nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. And it uh, looks like he just uh, was a little unaware and stepped over the boundary line. And hit out right to the, right to uh, number 17 there. That's David Atkins. And we've got another whistle. That and a free kick over the Hawks. Yeah, a bit of throw there where he's trying to, the uh, Oklahoma player's trying to collect the ball. Gotcha. And kick being delivered in the Ford 50. Nice oh, intercept mark, mark there. That was really nice there by one of the Buffalo players down and back. Yeah, beautiful pack mark there by the uh, Oklahoma player. Nice contested mark. Goes to kick it back up through, and here comes another pack forming. Almost. That would have been great if he was able to pull that in with the one hand there. That was, uh, who was that? That was uh, Jeremy Diaz. And he's got it once again, and he's wrapped up, and. 
Oh, the big fellow, the big fellow Diaz, number 17, is vicious. He yeah. was trying to just bash his way through. Yeah. Shades of gridiron, good running back. And up. Oh. High. Philadelphia free kick again. So that'll be uh, number 36. That'll be John Hinchin taking the kick. And he delivers it well into forward 50. Almost marked. Ball goes to ground. Oklahoma trying to move it out. Goodrick has it there. He's tackled. His handball goes out of bounds. Oh, we've got a push in the back, it looks like. As he was pushed out of bounds, so he'll have the free kick now. And he kicks up, and once again, you just see when the wind catches it there, you just see the path of the ball. It's, you know, it's, it's like watching the wiffle ball tournament. Yeah. Although the most amazing thing about the wiffle ball tournament is you see like all these like really twisty wild pitches, but then if someone is able to like get good, you know, get get good bat on it, that thing just sails. And punched out and then punched back. Buffaloes have it now, kick up the field. They've got somebody open if he can get to it, if he can sit for him. However, nice job, nice body work by the Philadelphia Hawks player just riding him off the ball. And in fact, he's gonna get the free kick and then they're gonna move it up again. Going up to the far wing, he's gonna take a bounce and then skip right into the hands of a Buffalo. But then that's intercepted there by the Hawks. Handball's off, another handball. And here we go, they're about to deliver it back into the forward 50. Picked up by the Buffaloes. And that's it, that's the final horn, that is full time. Wow. And the Buffalo's coming out with a quick lead, but unfortunately, you know, we're talking about you know, wasteful opportunities when you have kicks, and uh, Philadelphia only needed five scoring shots to, to get, basically get home today. Right, and you know, around the ground, especially in the first half, Oklahoma was absolutely dominating around the footy, just could not capitalize on their chances, whereas Philly seemed to be a bit more patient, a bit more, uh, better use of the footy, especially from, from the back to forward, and then capitalize on their chances. So they didn't have to get it up there that much, um, just that all they had to do was just make a count. Coming up next here on the uh, Coopers Field, we've got another match here from uh, Men's Division Three. It's going to be Quebec against the uh, Denver Bulldogs Reserves. Brian Barish will bring you the play-by-play -play for that one. I'm Bill Robert. Thanks very much to uh, uh, Mr. Moore, Mr. Heath Moore, for helping us out with the call here and helping out when I was trying to uh, fix the uh, iPod <laughs> with all the rosters in it. You had my back today. Thanks. Yeah, no Thanks, worries. Thanks, mate. All right, so once again, one last check of the Watch AFL scoreboard for this one. The Philadelphia Hawks victorious. They get over the line with a score of three goals, two behinds, 20 points, and the Oklahoma of Buffaloes, eight behinds, eight points. Coming up next, as we mentioned, it's going to be the um, uh, Denver Reserves going up against the uh, Quebec Saints, and that'll be next. Brian Barrett will have the call for you, and you can watch it all here. It is uh, Nationals 2022 for the United States Australian Football League. It's being brought to you thanks to the folks at Go Live Sports. Brian Barrett will be here at noontime. Stay tuned.